Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is healing the sick. Last week, we considered the question, what kind of disciples do we want to make? We noted that the answer varies widely depending on the views of the person we are talking to. However, if we ask Jesus this question, we would receive a very clear answer. Jesus wants all of his disciples to walk in the same power and authority he gave to the apostles. Matthew makes it very clear. As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. Disciples are people walking in power and authority, carrying the five clear mandates that Jesus gave to every believer. Disciples are not people who know a lot about Jesus or the Bible. Disciples are followers of Jesus who can do what Jesus did. Jesus gave us a clear mission with a clear focus. Preach the kingdom, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. So what is kingdom preaching? We learned last week that the man of Gadara is an example to us of what it means to carry a kingdom message. Without any formal training, Jesus gave him this instruction. Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. He went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Luke chapter 8 and verse 39. Preaching is sharing your experience about what God has done for you. It does not require a platform or a title. Kingdom preachers focus on what Jesus has done for them. Your encounter with Jesus is enough to draw people to Jesus. Today we're going to focus on the second mandate. Jesus said we are to heal the sick. Jesus did not ask us to pray for the sick. He commanded us to heal or to cure the sick. We have delegated authority to command diseases to go. Say to diseases what Jesus said to diseases. At first, you will most likely feel uncomfortable speaking directly to a disease. But over time, you will become more comfortable doing what Jesus invited us to do. Take authority over diseases. Speak to them just like Jesus did. This is what he modeled for the apostles to do. It is what he modeled for us to do. You might feel like it's not your right to speak directly to a disease, but Jesus will not feel that way about you. He will take delight in you exercising faith to believe that Jesus is willing to heal through you. One night I heard the audible voice of Jesus say to me, I'm willing to heal through you. It was a powerful experience. Today I'll share with you a simple five-step process I have learned to follow when healing the sick. If you follow this model, you will find it easier to heal than you ever imagined. Here are five clear questions to ask. What is the person's need? What is the heart of the matter? How do we direct our prayers? What is being experienced? And how do we walk in healing? The first step is to learn the basic details of what happened to a person requesting healing. Here are some questions to explore. What is your physical need? How did it happen? How long have you had this problem? What have doctors said about your condition? Was there any trauma connected to this problem? As you ask these questions, here are some helpful suggestions. Avoid taking a complete medical history. Learn just enough to know what the problem is. Details undermine the atmosphere of faith. Practice listening to the Holy Spirit at the same time you are listening to the person's ministry need. Holy Spirit will help you uncover aspects of healing that are more than physical. This brings us to the second step. What is the heart of the matter? People have diseases for a variety of reasons. Some are natural, but you're looking especially for those that have emotional roots. Or have there been any violation of God's known law? Jesus frequently healed people with whom he called an afflicting spirit. 
Here are some ways to know if the disease is being complicated by an afflicting spirit. Does the pain get worse? Does the pain move around? If the pain comes back a few days later, there may be an afflicting spirit. If this is the case, break the power of the afflicting spirit as you release healing. Next, we want to ask Holy Spirit to direct how to speak to the disease. These include words spoken to Father God. Invite the healing presence of the Lord in this particular moment. Words spoken to the condition. Command pain to go. Say cancer leave. Tumors shrink. Back pain go away. Muscles be relaxed. Then there are words which God gives you to say. Say exactly what he tells you to say, even if it does not make any sense to you. As you release these words, here are some recommendations we like to follow. To the person who is receiving words of healing, we recommend close your eyes, open your hands, don't pray with me, don't try to help me pray, just listen and let us know if you feel any sensation while we are praying. Typical sensations that people experience in healing include heat, mild electrical tingling, a deep calm, or a cool breeze. In the case of the lady who touched the fringe of Jesus' garment, Mark says, and immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Mark chapter 5 and verse 29. When we speak words of healing, people frequently have a physical sensation of something going on in their body. Here are some helpful tips as you declare words of healing. Speak short, directed words. Headache, go. Eyes open. Ears, be open. Keep your eyes open as you speak words of healing. Watch for twitching, facial expressions, sweating, or muscle movement. This will help you see what God is doing in a person's life. Next, we want to discover what the person is experiencing. Are you feeling better? People say, well, I think so. But in this moment, we want to encourage honesty. Sometimes people say, I believe by faith that I will be better tomorrow. But this is not tomorrow. This is today. I like to say to people, this is your healing, not mine. This is not time for a faith statement. This is a time to tell me, have you experienced a touch from God right now? One way to go about this is to ask people to rate their pain on a scale of 1 through 10. 10 being the worst and 0 being no pain. Doctors use a scale of pain that is subject to the patient's estimation every single day. As we pray for people, we can ask for their same assessment. If a person says, my pain is an 8, and then after declaring words of healing, ask them, what is your pain level now? If it is 6, it is progress, it is moving in the right direction. No matter how small the improvement is, give thanks to the Lord. Ask the person if you can pray again. Pray until the person is healed or until there does not seem to be any more improvement. Finally, we want to test healing. Ask the person to do what he or she could not do before they came to you for prayer. Some people are healed without any sensation whatsoever. Now we want to help people keep their healing. If symptoms return, advise the person to take immediate authority over them and command the pain to stop. Frequently I get asked, what if nothing happens? Be encouraged. It's impossible to talk to God and have nothing happen. You might not immediately know what has happened. I assure you, something has happened. There's been a change in you, and there's been a change in the person over whom healing words have been spoken. Some of the most dramatic healings I have seen took place a few weeks after I spoke healing words. Encourage you not to give up people feel nothing has happened, invite them to ask someone else to pray for them. Never blame the person for whom you are praying for not having enough faith to be healed. Jesus healed with his faith, not the person's faith. Use your own faith, not the person you're praying for, to release healing. We want to love unconditionally every person for whom we pray. I like to say to people, I can't guarantee you'll be healed, but I guarantee you'll feel loved as I minister to you.
You might hear a voice in your head saying, I can't do everything you've just spoken about. Well, let me encourage you. There was a time I felt that way as well. Everything that I have described takes place in just a few seconds. It's taken me longer to tell you how to do this than to actually do it. Keep practicing these steps. You will reach a point where you move through these guidelines without even thinking about it. I do my best to follow these steps with every person who comes to me for healing. As you follow these steps, you will discover that more people are healed through your words than you could have ever imagined. Healing brings joy. When people are healed in front of me, I begin to smile, the person begins to smile, and joy is released into the room, the atmosphere of faith. Healing releases joy into people's lives. Remember the words of Jesus, who said the greatest reason to rejoice when we're ministering healing and deliverance is because our names are written in the book of heaven. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Let me take a few moments and pray for you. I release to you faith to believe that Father is willing to heal through you. I have people tell me I'm not good enough to pray for healing. That's just shame. That's just the devil attempting to put shame and fear upon your life. Of course, the devil doesn't want you to walk in all the blessing that Father has given you to walk in. He'll do anything in his power to keep you from believing that God is willing to use you. He used all 12 of the disciples in healing. That means he used Judas. With all the shame that Judas carried, God still used him in healing while he was willing to pray for people. So I break fear and shame off of you. You can give away more than you have. Blind people pray for people who are blind and their eyes are opened. Deaf people pray for people who are deaf and their ears are opened. I don't understand all of that. There's nothing in you that prevents you or disqualifies you from releasing healing words to people. I pray that God will flow through your life, first touching you, and then out of your own encounter with him, you'll have more and more faith to pray for others. You'll see people healed beyond your wildest imagination. You will know the power of God is alive for today and flowing through your life. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled.